How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This video is on metallic bonding and students consistently don't take this one seriously. So take it seriously. Let's get into the video. So topic four, chemical bonding. We look at metallic bonding and we really just need to talk about what a metallic bond is. IB understandings and applications are listed on this page and students don't seem to pay as much attention to metallic, but it always pops up on an exam. Make sure you know the, def the definition of what a metallic bond is, and then we need to do some explanation of a few of the properties. So what is the definition of metallic bonding? The metallic bonding model consists of positively charged cations arranged in a regular lattice, by the and they're held together by the electrostatic attraction between the cations, which are positively charged, and the delocalized electrons. Delocalized means they don't belong to one of the cations, they belong to the lattice as a whole. The electrostatic attraction is the attraction between a positively charged ion and something that's negatively charged. And in this case, the negatively charged species are the delocalized electrons. So a metal has positively charged cations in a regular lattice, and then everywhere between those cations, we have our delocalized electrons, which I've tried to shade in in red here. They're moving around all the time in a random direction between the ions. They are delocalized. Where have they come from? They've come from the outer shell of the metal atoms. So what are some of the key points for the metallic bonding model? It's a lattice of positively charged cations, the electrostatic attraction between the cations and the electrons holds the lattice together. And remember that those delocalized electrons, they belong to the lattice as a whole, not particular atoms. They're free to move randomly throughout the lattice. So one of the properties we have to be able to explain is malleability. Now malleability is the property which enables a metal to be hammered or pressed or shaped into all of the different things we use the metals for. We need to be able to ex explain malleability, malleability using a simple two-dimensional metallic bonding model. So here I've got my metal cations in my lattice structure and between those I have my delocalized electrons. Now how can we use this to say that metals are malleable? Well it's due to the layers of the ions being able to slide past one another. They're able to move and still be attracted to the delocalized electrons. So the crystal won't break apart, there's no repulsion, because between the ions there's the delocalized electrons. So the shifting of the layers of metal ions allows us to press it and hammer it into the shape that we need. So we define that as being malleable. Just to illustrate that, we can see if I move the layers from side to side, the layers will slide past one another and that's going to change the shape of our metal. We also need to be able to explain the electrical conductivity of a metal using the bonding model. An electrical conductivity is defined as the ability of a material to carry the flow of an electric current. So I want you to pretend that we have a battery and our battery has a positive terminal and a negative terminal. And when I connect that battery up to my metal, what I'm doing is creating a negative end and a positive end. Now the delocalized electrons within the metal, generally they're moving in random directions. But now I've got a positive end and a negative end, so those delocal delocalized electrons will flow towards the positively charged terminal or the positively charged electrode. The negative terminal of the battery, well that's pumping in electrons. So the electrons are flowing from the negative of the battery through the metal towards the positive. So the electrons flow in one direction, and in this case they're attracted to the positively charged terminal. I think I've written negatively charged there, but it is positively charged terminal. We also need to talk about alloys. 
Now, the property of a metal can be significantly altered by adding small amounts of other substances, either another metal or carbon, for instance. Whenever we do this, we've made what we've called an alloy. Now, the production of alloys is possible because of the non-directional nature of the delocalized electrons and the fact that the lattice can accumulate different ions, different sizes of ions. So, for instance, the substitutional alloy between copper and nickel is where the, some of the copper atoms or the copper ions are replaced with nickel ions. And this is what Australian silver coins are made of. Now, by altering the different sizes of the ions, that causes a restriction between the layers. So now it's a lot harder for the layers to slide past each other. The bigger nickel ions are going to hit the copper ions below. So that means it's harder and less malleable. The second type of alloy is an interstitial alloy. That's where we place in a smaller atom into the layer, into the lattice of positively charged cations. So for example, this one is like stainless steel or steel, where we have added in carbon atoms into the lattice of iron, and that also helps with restricting the movement of the layers. The layers can't move past each other. Interstitial basically means that the carbon atoms fit into the hollows between the different metal ions. It's gonna make them harder to slide past each other. Okay, topic four, volume two, some top tips. Make sure you can draw a labeled diagram and remember, it's the electrostatic attraction. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.